This video is designed to teach you about the cell membrane. Uh, the cell membrane has four main parts that we'll get from looking at this diagram here on the screen. To go through each of them and uh, just in, in very broad detail first, then we'll actually spend time on each of the parts individually. Uh, it does look like there's a lot going on here, but many of these things are the, the same kinds of material shown over and over and over again. Uh, the first one we'll talk about are the proteins. Some of them are very large, like these guys, they're called intermembrane proteins going all the way through. Um, others, like this one, don't necessarily extend all the way through the membrane. And then we've got proteins like this long kind of thin one on the side. Uh, but the proteins are there mostly to transport things, to allow things in and out of the cell. Uh, and also they act as an anchor point for another one of our membrane parts. If you're looking over here, these little uh, circle looking guys, those are carbohydrates. They're actually mounted to the proteins, so the protein acts almost like an anchor for them. Uh, the carbohydrate's function is to identify the cell. Uh, another thing that we're looking at are cholesterols. There are these little guys in here, kind of wedged in between the two parts of the membrane. Those are there for added stability. And then the ones that you're seeing all over the place, this one here is sort of boxed off on the side. They have two parts to them. Uh, there's sort of this circular head portion and these two little tails. Those are called phospholipids. Those are what make up most of the inside of the membrane. Uh, I should say the, in, the inside and the outside of the membrane. And they're set up in what's called a phospholipid bilayer. So you can see there's a layer on top here and then a layer on the bottom as well. I know it's hard to see this a little bit, but up top here it says extracellular fluid. That's the fluid outside of the cell. And then down here is the cytoplasm. Remember that the cells are usually in water. So there's water on the outside and then there's also going to be water on the inside. So we've got our H2O out here, and then water on the inside of the cell as well. That's going to be important when it comes to the orientation of those phospholipids. So those are our four main parts. We've got our proteins, our carbohydrates, cholesterols, and then phospholipids, making up most of the membrane. I'll take some time to go through each of them individually, talk about what they do, and what they look like a little bit. So to expand on the phospholipids a little, these are probably the most important because they're making up the majority of the membrane. Remember, they're the red guys with the yellow tails, and they have two sides of them. Uh, the red side is actually attracted to water because if you're remembering, there's water on both the outside and on the inside of our cell. So the circular head portion is attracted to that water. The tail portion is afraid of that water. It kind of hides on the inside of the membrane. So in order to uh, expand upon this one a little bit, we'll look at a simple model that only shows the, uh, the two things that we're looking at here with the phospholipids. Uh, sh this shows two very important terms. The first one is hydrophobic. The other one is hydrophilic. Uh, if we're breaking down hydrophobic, phobic means afraid. So this means hydrophobic, it's afraid of water. Whereas hydrophilic, uh, the word philic means love, it's attracted to or loves water on this side. So we've got water loving. Sorry, my small handwriting is not as good on here. I know the, the big handwriting is bad too. Um, but this explains to us why we get the orientation of the membrane that we're seeing. Uh, this side, like the circular portion, is attracted to water. Remember, there's water outside the cell, and there's also water inside the cell. So we've got water on either side here. And then the tail portion that kind of hides in the middle, this is the hydrophobic end, the part that's afraid of water, so they're pointing on the inside. The neat thing about the phospholipids is they naturally take this formation. They will naturally line up with one set on the outside, and then the other set sort of hiding on the inside. This is important when we get to the origin of the first cell. And I'll show this to you in class. You can make a phospholipid bilayer um, that will naturally form. This is actually what happens partially every time you wash your hands and you get soap bubbles. That's a very, very similar in structure to this phospholipid bilayer. So it's something that's naturally forming. This makes up the vast majority of the cell membrane. The next part for us to talk about are the proteins. If we blow this picture up and look at it, uh, there's two main types. The first one that we're seeing are these guys here. It almost looks like a little tunnel. Uh, some proteins are important because they're for transport. So this is partly what's allowing things in and out of the cell. 
Uh, the other ones just kind of act like an anchor point. We talked about these earlier. They have the carbohydrates attached to them. So it's uh, like an anchor for other things to attach to. Those are honestly the, uh, the two main functions of the proteins. We'll get into some of the different types of transport. There's different ways that they let certain things in and out of the cell. But for the proteins, it's pretty straightforward. Another thing to remember is that these are the largest of all of the different things that are set up inside the membrane. Uh, cholesterols are our next one. Cholesterols are important. They actually provide a very important stability function for the cell. I know that these are kind of hard to see. There's an example of one there. They're sort of um, like these little block-like structures that wedge in between the phospholipids. What they end up doing is providing stability for the cell membrane. If you think of the way a wedge works under a door, like it takes up the open space between the door and the floor and it holds the door open, that's kind of what these little cholesterol guys are doing. They're wedged in between the phospholipids, it's taking up some of that space in between them, and it's making the membrane more rigid. So think of them as being there for stability. If you didn't have the cholesterols in there and the membrane were to bump up against something hard, the uh, phospholipids would end up shifting apart. The membrane would basically be a lot more fragile if the cholesterols weren't a part of it. And then the last one for us to talk about are carbohydrates. As I mentioned to you, these guys are a little hard to see on here. They're mounted on top of some of these proteins on the top. One thing to notice with these that's unique is they're only found on the outside of the cell. If we can move this a little bit. I remember this is the extracellular fluid up here, meaning this is the outside of the cell up on top, and then the down, uh, the part below is the inside. So you got outside the cell, inside the cell. The important thing with the carbohydrates is they act to identify the cell. So it acts like a, a cell ID. This is actually how your immune system and your body recognizes foreign cells. To give you an example of when this is important, if somebody gets a transplant, so say they get a kidney or some other organ from another person, that person's organ is going to have different carbohydrate markers on the outside. Your body can recognize that cell as foreign and your immune system will actually attack it. Uh, this is honestly a good thing most of the time. You want your body to recognize foreign cells and go after them. The problem is if you're a transplant recipient, you know you need those foreign cells. You need that organ in order to be healthy. So usually people who receive organ transplants are on immunosuppressant drugs that actually suppress their immune system's ability to recognize things that are invading it. This is good in the sense that it protects them against like attacking that new organ. It's bad though because it can make you susceptible to getting sick from normal things that your immune system should be going after. But uh, basically the carbohydrates are there for identification. If you remember this, it's there to identify your cells. It's to allow your immune system to recognize things that are foreign from you. And it tells your immune system basically what to go after and what's normal, like what's supposed to be there. So I know this one got a little bit longer than some of the other videos, but there are four different parts to the membrane. Most complicated one, to be sure you know, are the phospholipids. If you know hydrophilic, hydrophobic, uh, just you know, follow the... Uh, the parts of the word there, you know, phobic, afraid of, philic, uh, loving or attracted to, then you'll have no problems. So um, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in class.